Onions are the third largest vegetable crop in the world. New Zealand produces 600,000 tonnes each year, generating over $60 million in exports. Research has been underway for some years now by Plant and Food Research and the University of Otago, investigating what controls bulb development and growth. Those mechanisms were unknown until recently. Peter Ryan has been growing onions in Pukekohe for over 50 years and has been involved in the program. We're one of the families that have been involved in onion breeding and maintenance of the old John Turbot strain of Pukekohe longkeeper, which is probably one of the most famous open pollinated storage onions in the world. If you look at where, where it started with John Turbot, 80% uh, of the onion seed that, uh, that was grown was, was imported seed but it wouldn't store. So John, out of, out of the straw Spanish, started selecting for, for the onions, the keepers, the ones that stored the longest. And that's evolved at each generation. We're now up to the stage where the industry's looking for onions that are high quality, that will ship, you know, up to 40 days, will store six to eight months. Uh, virtually you can play cricket with. So that's where the industry's evolved over the last 90 years. If you look back to where we were up until the 1990s as breeders, we were, we were just maintaining and selecting the better keepers. We weren't using uh, modern genetics, uh, which has actually come in in the last decade. We're lucky in this region, there are two professional seed companies, uh, international companies, uh, the old Yates company, which is uh, now owned by a Dutch company, and, and the American company, Seminus, have both got up-to-date modern breeding research stations here in Pukekohe. So our industry is, is well serviced by our commercial guys. I think uh, onions being biannual, uh, along with carrots, if the seed companies rate their difficulty in reproduction, onions and carrots are, are at the top of the list, the most difficult, because they're biannuals. So from seed to seed, it takes two years. Whereas if you're looking at tomatoes and lettuce, and the legumes, you can have a shot four or five times a year. What sort of background is it from? Well, it's, uh, it, that's unknown. It's, apparently it's 140 years old, the strain. Mm -hmm. It's from uh, a seed savers group in Australia. I started working on the onions in the mid-90s and uh, we really started off to uh, work with US researchers on trying to pick apart the structure of the genome and develop genetic maps to understand the structure of traits that are of importance to breeding worldwide. And, you know, it's a pretty tough thing in the early days, but um, about 10 years ago we used that knowledge to sort of first get some hints about the controlled sweetness in onions and uh, it turned out to be a really interesting story and we, we, we in the um, about five years ago we got a grant to look at the control of really flowering and, and adaptation in onions so how they respond to uh, photo period and temperature to uh, turn them into you know, a product that's useful in different environments and to specifically exploit some of the new sequencing technologies that are coming through that have really revolutionised medicine and now agriculture. We've been really fortunate to find some of the things that we hope to find, including what switches on to make a bulb and helps them make a flower to get seed to make more bulbs. Well, the onion genome is really challenging because it's really huge. There's some efforts underway to actually sequence the whole genome in the Netherlands uh, at the moment. But it's very, very big, and I think it's going to be a, a really tough job. We've got a lot of sequence, though, about the genes themselves, which are quite a small, you know, a few percent. And we've got a lot of uh, sequence from these guys. This is an American double haploid onion. These two are identical. Uh, they're like twins. So it gives us a lot more power to use these sequencing technologies and to do genetics. What we've been really interested in is how the growing plant knows that it's time to bulb and time to flower. When an onion plant starts growing and it's a seedling, there's a gene that's expressed that stops it bulbing and stops it flowering. When it gets a critical day length in the spring, um, if, if it's a normal onion, uh, long day onion like, like these ones, that gene gets switched off and another one comes on which tells it it's time to bulb. And then there's another one uh, when the bulb's gone dormant like, like these ones, when these have had some cold, there's another one that gets switched on in the base that makes it flower. Uh, so it's a simple, so to get an ideal onion, you want an onion that goes quiet like this, so you can export it and it goes, it'll, it'll, it'll stay and it'll stay like this in, in storage for a while. But if you're a breeder or a seedsman, you want it to flower. 
So getting that balance, what we don't want is these to flower in the first season. We want a bulb, not a flower. But in the second season, for profitable seed production, you need a flower. One of the things that we weren't really expecting is that it turns out that actually knowing what some of these genes are that are the switches uh, is really useful for studying other things. So for instance, we've got a, a student who's working at Massey University who's been doing some work looking at the effects of nitrogen on, on growing onions. And what happens if they don't have enough nitrogen that the actual, this, this gene that's holding them back is, 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 is highly expressed. So you can use it to take the pulse of what the onion's experiencing. So we can use this as a way to really understand, say, for instance, how uh, agricultural treatments like, uh, say, particularly nitrogen's a really interesting one, how that's affecting the whole process. And so to understand the whole mechanism of producing a high quality crop. The other one that is really interesting, if we're going to access a lot of other novel genetics from different places, this whole getting them to perform right in our environment to make a bulb, not a flower, we don't want this. This is one of the single biggest problems, say, in bringing in new hybrids. It's been a really big barrier to getting high quality hybrids that work in our environment. Uh, we, we, we need to know a little bit more about you know, the, the big picture of, of how the genetics works in with the physiology. So this is also these, these genes and the way that breeders have worked on, that's the story of the domestication of onion. And we're trying to get some work going with India and some Indian researchers because uh, India is really the seat of a lot of genetic resources and probably a lot of really primitive onion genetic resources. Uh, they're one of the biggest uh, onion producers and consumers as well, so they're a natural partner. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.